Yo, did I tell you about this? Yeah, sorry, I got the thing you sent me. Just give me one second, I can check it out. I I was doing what this. Thing? Th We're live. <laughs> you said you wanted me to look over something before. No. Oh, just add it to the fucking show prep. I'm sorry, okay. No, we're good. Why are you sorry? Jacob V. Weekly, March 3rd, 2021. I feel like I need to start the show more abruptly so people know it's starting. Um, yeah. That was, uh, I was playing that music from that songwriting challenge I'm doing that um, I want to write a song like Enya or like Kate Bush, like something really theatrical and kind of like... Uh, Sail away, sail away. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, it's definitely got to be about water. <laughs> looking at pictures of lighthouses. And uh, so that's like a, it kind of sounds more like an X-Files alternative theme song, but uh, it's a work in progress. It's just eight bars. Oh, my God. Why on earth? Sorry, I'm having a potato bowl from the Mix Grill <laughs> from Halal Wait. Place on um, Postmates near me. Always didn't a banger. A, didn't you have a bean burrito like five minutes ago? No, I had two bean burritos <laughs> over an hour ago. All right, let's jump right in here. Stay in the news. Um, we have so much we want to get to. We have a very special guest on today for our 20th episode. He has nothing to do with the podcast thus far, but he is a good friend of mine, and I can't wait to catch up with him. I'll let that be a surprise um, in case he has an emergency and can't show up. Joe, I think John Mellencamp is a great indicator of the social cultural divide across our nation right now. You know John Mellencamp? You're a younger guy. Yes, I'm familiar. Like some people here... Sucking on a chili dog outside the taste of freeze. And they think, like I do, ick, why is that celebrated Americana? Why are we listening right. to a song about sucking on a chili dog? And oh, other man. people hear that same lyric in that same song, and they say, yes, deliver me to the holy mediocrity of a heartland sausage. <laughs> And I yes. think we're getting to the point where those people on either side of that issue are coincidentally on the other sides of a lot of other issues, and they're kind of refusing to tolerate each other in a way that's really crazy. For example, we have two really great progressive liberal uh, mayoral candidates, both female, uh, here in St. Louis. That just uh, There was just an election yesterday you may have seen on our Jacob V. Weekly Instagram uh, page. I made some Kara Spencer memes that apparently were only funny to me and like one other guy. Not a big deal. Make sure you find us at Jacob V Weekly. J A C O B V I W E E K L E Y. Sorry, just L Y. God damn it! Oh no, we're gonna fix all that in post. We need we need some warm ups. We need a uh, tip of the tongue, teeth and lips. The Human Torch was denied a bank loan, <laughs> and what? Uh, Basically, we're going to get into here in a minute is, is some of um, that business. But I'm looking at the, the binary that's affected the last couple uh, national elections, and it's sort of playing out in a very coded way with a office that, here locally that is typically very one way. It's a very like establishment Democrat office usually. Usually you just know who that next mayor is going to be um, here. And we got a di we got a different situation. We have Kara Spencer, uh, who was one of the two people I voted for, who is uh, a nice young white lady, who I also happen to know on good authority uh, was escorted out of the Apple Store at the Galleria because she did not like that her iPhone warranty was expired and kind of threw a fit. Um, and I can sympathize. I've been upset when I feel like I'm being forced to upgrade. You know what I mean? Nobody wants to be forced to upgrade. But I don't make a scene and then almost get tased on my way out the building. And this is completely hearsay. I heard this from a guy who just knew <coughs> who just knew the guy there. So we really have to have him on to confirm that story. We got it. It's I like mean, third hand right now, but it, it influences my feelings. If she was going to get tased, that means that she. I have no idea if she was going to get tased. I mean, I it was that's, violent. That's the that's worst exciting. thing that could have happened. Yeah. <laughs> 
Worst case scenario, she gets tased. And I don't I don't want that on anybody. Now, Tashara Jones, who I voted for a couple times, got beat out by Lyda Crusums last time. They got new safer physical. option. Tashara's a very young, progressive, um, uh, experienced local kind of politician. She's uh, uh, She's been like treasurer or something. But I'm starting to kind of feel like more people from within the system we've had in place are not necessarily the answer, right? So I've had my hesitations about Tashara just as I've warmed up ever so slightly to Kara in such a way that I'm really, pour, um, really pouring like a lot of thought into the primary that's going to happen next month because um, I don't know. I don't know. If I had to vote right now, I'd probably vote for Tashara Jones. Where do you go, where where are you voting? Where are you going to vote you, for this you stuff? You are so weird about trying to get people's exact geographical locations. I mean, I I just have never voted in this type of election. I need to know. It's the same place Maybe I you voted can tell for the president. Public. It's at a it's at a school nearby. Okay. Set up in a gym in a school nearby me. That's cool. Right on, John Millicamp. That was a weird. That was a weird little run you did there. You no, just no, don't no. like John Millicamp, you motherfucker. <laughs> it's not. It's the exact same thing. Some people hear that lyric in that song and they like it, and some people like me are kind of grossed out by it. There's better lyrics to better songs. My first exposure. And this lyric came into my head this week while I was preparing for the show because it's like on a lot of memes. No, you're on. I can fucking hear you. And so this lyric is in memes lately in my feed, and I've been on Instagram more because we have an Instagram for the show at Jacob V Weekly, L Y. And I was thinking, oh, my God, everything is like that. Some people think, of course, this, like we talk about all the time, for example, of course the school should be open. Kids have to be in school. Other people feel intrinsically like, oh, we shouldn't send anybody into the building until it's safe. And those people are, are still at odds all the time. They're, the health department is shutting down a local high school I just heard on the radio on the way home. For a month, because of the high number of cases. And it takes the city, or the county in this case, coming in and shutting it down for the school to agree to do it in that case. If the health wow. department say anything, the school would never go to the parents and say, uh, we need to close because we have so many cases. The health department had to say something. You were saying, Joe? That is, that's wild. That's just wild that they, had to, they actually had to step in, so they weren't going to do anything. Well... They probably didn't know when the cutoff was, but they did not enact a cutoff. And I know how short staff these buildings can get right now. Yeah. You got half of your building out on quarantine. And if you're kind of tight staffed anyway, because you don't have tons of money in the district, like that's a problem. I agree. Good, good. <laughs> we settled that. Moving on. You can't give me a little something so I can eat this potato. I know. I know. Look, folks, the. Uh... Oh, Never mind. Do don't yeah, the audience. audience. I know. I don't understand that. Jake, uh, Jake's looking at trying to get a position at another uh, at another radio program, but we will keep Jacob V Weekly the most hot. Oh, that'd be great. Part yeah, of the. Uh, I just, I'm just finding opportunities for me to talk more while seated. So we're kind of moving our uh, offices potentially, and I'm really excited. That's probably gonna not going to happen. Salary. Never mind. Quit making stuff up. Okay. Okay. So did you get the headline I sent you to put in here? It's in there. It's just, it's right good, up good, I'll get there. First thing I saw, did you see they just yesterday passed an anti-transgender athlete bill in Tennessee? That sounds like Tennessee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very, con it's very, um, I don't, I keep wanting to say confidential. What's the word? Controversial. It's a very controversial situation because you have students who transition genders because of their own reasons and then. That's also the, the prime of their life athletically when they would compete in any kind of way athletically. And we don't want to exclude those kids from those situations. However, it's so much more rare than should necessitate a law. And laws like this are often passed in a sort of um, protest of something. Right, you know what I mean. It was like Section Eight, I think they call it. That Section Eight. What's what's prop your 8, angle? Like prop when um, California legalized gay marriage, but then they then Prop Eight like I almost said debunked, but like de it, like 
criminal uh, not criminalized it but it you know invalidated it again right uh, back and forth you know what i mean and that's why it had to go all the way to the supreme court was years of that kind of stuff right similar issue here and it does sound like tennessee because of the heavy evangelical vote and there's a lot of people with influence and, and money that um uh could afford to be passionate about this issue in such a way to make this sort of statement this just goes back to sucking on a chili dog brother I'm, now you've cursed it. Now it's going to plague the whole episode. Every other thing is going to come back to sucking on a chili dog. So let that's me really you good, this one, bitch. That's good. So we know why you put shit. that in there. But I do have a question. You know, this is the so. same thing. Some people look at this very headline and they respond like how I respond, which is, um, that sounds fucked up. That sounds like Tennessee. That's some ignorant shit. Like, that's not necessary, blah, 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 whatever you want to say. Other people say, well, I don't know that I want a grown, a 17-year-old man wrestling with my daughter and then and then i have to fight with those people those people will be here and there's going to be tons of people i shared a tiktok i think today about this that act like they're in the spectrum on that issue somewhere and it's really about compassionate response is the uh, the best way to approach those situations that people are acting like that that's what they're worried about but it's i think more so legislation that's introduced as a political statement for example, we also, I think, bro, sucking on a chili dog part seven, the return, brother, Morgan Wallen, this guy I can't fucking ignore. I was so excited when Jack White was going to be on SNL that time that we talked about a couple weeks ago, and he got to be on SNL because this idiot Morgan Wallen was supposed to be on SNL, but he was on Instagram at a nightclub with no mask on the same week, and so they said, nah, -uh, baby girl, and then they had that private jet booked in nashville already they said who else do we know in nashville that could come be on the show jack white and daru and fucking dominic davis to the rescue baby it was lit it was great it was a great thing and i loved it and i thought oh that sucks that morgan wallace can't put on a mask and not go out to a nightclub and now he blew his shot to be on snl well then a couple weeks ago earlier this year right which i mean it's only been a handful of weeks um He's in the news again because he gets caught on camera, hammered drunk, calling his buddy the N-word, and neither of them happen to be African-American, so it's inappropriate for them to say the N-word. Yeah, right? fool. And then, yeah. hold on, sucking on a chili dog, brother. That's right. Now, mm -hmm. his album has spent seven weeks at number one on the Billboard album charts, even after his COVID breach and his N-bomb scandal post-Ace. His excuse was, I was on a 72-hour bender. That's why I was saying the N-word. And now it's almost as though, even though he's been blacklisted from TV and radio because of all this controversial behavior, he's selling tons of whatever you even sell now. I mean, what do you, how, I don't even know how you make money for seven straight weeks as a publishing, like recording artist. I have no idea how that would even, I guess he's selling copies of the album or getting some kind of streaming play because he's not on commercial radio. Advertising. I do have a comment. Please. On for Stop both me. topics. Save me for myself. I'm going to have a potato. For both topics. So, uh, no, no, there's no, no. Morgan. It's one topic. You see, you've made the whole thing That's... about the binary, about some people intrinsically disagree on things, and it's like we're two dog. different species of people. Okay. And it's well, sucking okay. on a chili dog, Joseph. So, Morgan Wallen, what I think is really interesting is he, what did he, he came back and he said, you know, because he got all this support by with with plays, right? And and you know what I think is amazing that he did is he went online. And he was like, "Guys, you know, that you know, I really deserve this." But what did he do? He said, "Um, let me see." He, his first comment about it was like, "You know, it was uh, he was he was going out through his fans for supporting him, which I am blows me away because it's like somehow he was able to." come out a not exactly a victim but he was able to come out like a no like you know what guys this actually you know this is a call for change it's like wait when did you become the spokesperson for it you just said the n-word yeah. yeah. you know yeah that's kind of how i felt like james franco responded to his kind of me too moment like he just kind of went on kimmel and was like oh i'm i'm sorry if anything was weird i thought everything was cool and then it was over i'm like oh i didn't know you had that choice Wait, so here it is. So he says, 
country artist Morgan Wallen is again apologizing for getting caught saying the N word. Um, he's okay, so he does this Instagram video and it says, I'm long overdue to make a statement regarding the incident. I want to collect my thoughts uh, and seek some real guidance and come to you with complete thought. Okay, sorry, let me skip ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he goes, No, some, uh, I let oh my, my son, God. I can't find the, the exact comment. I, he speaks to his fans though and says uh, what's his name I used Morgan Wallen uh, Wallen said in the statement obtained by people there are no excuses for you, this type of language ever I want to sincerely apologize I'm trying to find he, he said something to his audience though and I, it was like you know but, but the vibe I was getting was like it's like it's as if you are saying the N word, and then some like, you know, KKK member comes in to back you up, and you're like, whoa, well, no, no, I, you know, and then suddenly you become the hero, for shutting down the KKK member, and that's what I'm talking about. Anyway, sorry, full statement, and then back to the trans uh, issue. Somebody posted something a really good perspective that I thought was really strong. Well, I was just thinking know, the Nashville connection. Is why those are next to each other, I think. Right on. Go oh, ahead. yeah. Well, something really interesting that I saw was the thing about sports is that there will always be somebody better than you, you know, and everybody wants to come and say, okay, well, what about Usain Bolt or something? It's like, yes, you know, maybe one day, but in high school sports and in college sports, there will always be somebody better coming up. And how, so how does that change? Like, so so what if there's a girl that was once a dude that is like making all these records unfortunately they will always be known for being trans and setting those records but also there will always be somebody better than you regardless so if you aren't ready to um compete with that then sports isn't for you because sports is inherently about really and and why not why wouldn't you be up to the toughest um the toughest uh a component <laughs> you're right i was just thinking that that's myself, what sports Joe. is about i'm thinking if i'm a 12 year old girl i want to fight a grown man you know yeah. what i mean strip him down put him in the ring i want to really push because if i because why am i training in martial arts as a 12 year old girl in the suburbs other than to eventually fight a bear who's going to be much larger than me i have to be that's able what I'm saying. to kung fu that fucking bear right i think we have a guest with us jeremy are you there i am Jeremy, can you can you hear me? Mm -hmm. He's not doing video. Yeah, I guess not. Come on, there Jeremy. he is. Your hands. Hold on, Thank Jeremy. You. Do you know who I am? Hold on. Will you leave him alone? He's not even here yet. <laughs> Hi, I'm here now. That was that was ve that was very um, aggressive. <laughs> well, you know, well, you know, Jeremy, I used you know to work who at I am. You know, I used to work at Helium. Ah, uh, yes. You remember? No. Oh. Well, <laughs> just like got here, Joseph. What are you talking? Just you didn't like even a know comic. You were ignore be... the staff. <laughs> it's uh, I do not. Uh, I do not ignore the staff. I do apologize. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> if you worked as helium, um, yeah. That, well, this is a fun way to start to put this me on right. defense and make. I, I made awkward. him do that. It's all about <laughs> it's disarming the whole situation. Because now we uh -huh. can paint it with whatever mood we want. Uh huh. You have a What's up, y'all? I love that. Look at his oh, studio. Thanks, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm looking. I'm here. I'm here. Jeremy, hi. Hey, bud. So you're on Jacob V Weekly. This is my friend Joe Peary. He is uh, kind of my Google guy and Sorry. good friend of mine. And uh, uh, Jeremy is a lot of things. I met Jeremy at a Heavy Anchor. He needed me to play keyboard for a um, a live action game show they used to do called Loser. And yeah. then. And then we did a lot of other things, musically and otherwise. Um, but I wanted to kind of uh, catch up for all sorts of reasons, and I thought it'd be appropriate. Um, we're also having a, a mutual friend of ours uh, in studio tomorrow for some content we're working on for a couple different reasons. So um, you've been on my mind. How are you? I'm good. Who's our mutual friend? Oh, Langan. Langan and crew. Oh, yeah, I Fun. think they're, we're going to record a thing uh, kind of with and for her, and then I think they're going to uh, record a spot for this show also. 
So. Oh, nice. Um, uh, just a little uh, I teaser. think I was supposed to be part of that, actually, and it got confirmed real late, and so I couldn't make it out. That's mm -hmm. fun. I'm glad yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that it ended just, up. It just, um, like, real late. Nice. You know, and, you know, you know how people are with their, uh, anyway. So yeah, it's really unfortunate that you couldn't be there. <laughs> Bummer. Oh, President Obama is going to be there. I kind of made Joe join me tonight, and I'm kind of asking myself why. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jake. Bad Wrap time. it up, player. I'm, I'm muted. Great. He's muted. So, Jeremy, I don't even know. I don't want to assume that I know how to introduce you. Would you Would you identify more as a comedian, a musician, a non-binary blob of goo? I don't know. Uh, my taxes say I own a record label, so I'll go with that, Great. and then the rest can be whatever. Yes, and that's something I want to talk about as well. Where do you want to start? you want to go chronologically, or do you want to go reverse chronologically? We're going to end, or we're uh, going to start at birth. Um, I mean, that was Akron, Ohio, so we can go wherever you want from there. Okay. I don't want to talk about Ohio right now, so let's move on. Um, okay. <laughs> Jeremy, so, some of my favorite stuff that you've done is... Um, is your stand-up. You have a lot of stand-up comedy available on streaming platforms, and I got to kind of uh, engineer the recording of uh, one of those releases, which was a really great learning experience for me. And so um, can you kind of talk us through um, – I, I guess you can't do a lot of stand-up right now because of COVID. Well, I mean, no, you can, actually. Um, That's a what lot I want to know. I mean – it kind of depends on the state. Um, like, for example, in St. Louis, Helium's been open since June. Of last year? Um, what's that? I, I didn't know it was steadily open that long. Yeah. Yep. Um, they had a period between November and I think January where they couldn't um, serve food uh, because restaurants weren't allowed to be open. So at that point, they were a retail uh situation it isn't but, a mall um yeah true very true um so i mean i've actually done a decent bit of stand-up uh we've done a number of albums um it's you know it's been different it's been super weird yeah um but so has everything i mean you know what i mean like when you go like stand-up's been weird it's like well everything's been weird like it, it's weirder if you go like oh it's been the same it's like oh so you didn't give a shit i guess yeah, the weirdest right. thing for me is I haven't been, I haven't like sat and eaten in a restaurant this whole time. Uh, I've only, <laughs> I've only eaten in one restaurant in the last year. It was Blueberry Hill. I <laughs> was visit, I was in town and I was yeah. visiting, and I said hello to my friend Andrea, and I was just like, hey, I'm, I just wanted to say hi. I'm not eating here. And she goes, oh no no no, your seats open because there's this booth I always sit at at Blueberry Hill. And I go, oh, no, 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 I'm not comfortable eating inside. And she goes, oh, that side of the restaurant's closed. We'll give you the whole half of the restaurant. Oh, I would do that. <laughs> yeah, no, and I was like, oh, I get the whole half of the restaurant? Like, I'm completely comfortable with that situation. <laughs> so, yeah, I would definitely do that. <laughs> that's the only restaurant I've eaten indoors in in a year. Yeah, um, I'm have, I'm still eating. This is kind of a theme of the show is the food that infiltrates the show. So if you Okay, what are you eating? That's, it's part of my thing. I'm not even hungry. They make me do it. Oh, okay. Who's they? The um, I do. I do it to myself. Okay, right on. Sure. I'm just. Yep, I'm. Yep, so, yep. I got a real. I got a real buffet lined up because I'm on a euro with fries, but I just had a potato bowl, and then I have a Greek Ooh. salad and enough hummus to kill a mule. So, we're in it for the long haul tonight, baby. Okay. The space there looks beautiful. Now I can't remember which of the Carolinas you're in, but do not tell anybody because of the CIA. No, I'm in uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. North Carolina. Joe, you were right. Joe knew it was north. I was like, it could be the other yep. one. I don't know. And is that, yeah, a, not, is that I, an adjacent to something? Uh, Good Nights Comedy Club is here. Uh, the University of North Carolina is here. Duke is here. Uh, Duke, that's the one. Mm -hmm. I've yeah, that's that. in Durham. That's in Durham. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of colleges. I mean, where I live in Chapel Hill is where UNC is, so it's a huge college town. There's just kids everywhere and whatnot. Yeah, I love children. <laughs> How's the comedy scene? Ah, uh, good, actually. Um, I, you know, we uh, we're doing like four albums this year with people from specifically here. 
So there's some really great comics. That's awesome. Um, guy named Caleb Elliott. We're recording next week. We're doing a guy named Mark Brady in a couple weeks. Uh, we just shot some video for this guy, uh, Michael Miller, who's super funny. Brett Blankney. There's a lot of really funny, funny people here. So it's. Um, so that's an obvious segue. So let's talk about that for a minute. So um, I love that there is a scene where you are and and um, that you're participating that way. But talk to me about the record label and kind of that process, because I, I think it's something that's really interesting that not a lot of people know about. So the process wise, uh, I mean, like recording or process of what? Well, yeah. So, OK, so it's a it's mostly it's a comedy label. Mm hmm. And um and you kind of engineer the the recordings of the show, as you were telling me? Yeah, so um, depending on the show and depending on the club, uh, I'll either go and engineer or I can do it remotely in some of the clubs because uh, they're all, like, we have permanent... I mean, when I lived in St. Louis, you were there. I had, like, wired my whole basement, essentially, to be a live room. And so I use that same wow. technology to wire all these comedy clubs, including Helium in St. Louis, to be um, always ready. So it's just a question of if I can log in remotely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I engineer these albums and we bring them down and I bring them literally into the room you're looking at. Uh, this is the room that uh, last week had the number 22 album on iTunes. That's awesome. Uh, wow. Not, yeah, not comedy, by the way. The number 22 album on iTunes. Wow. Uh, it's yeah, so uh, that was mixed in this room you're looking at. So, yeah. Um, so that's so exciting because that's also that part of the that industry is also kind of COVID proof in that you know the the machine that kind of makes all the stuff that you capture at a performance ready to go out to the public. I mean, you're doing all that kind of in your home space, which is so fun. Yeah, no, it really is. It's um, it's like that itself was lucky. I mean, it wasn't really to like July where I was just like, oh, I don't have anything to do. Like we recorded so much stuff early last year that, um, you know, I spent March, April, May and part of June just like trying to get through all the recordings we had because um, yeah. we also do a lot of um, like best of, you know what I mean? Like we'll record 10 comics in St. Louis, we'll record 10 comics in Portland, 10 in Philly, 10 here in Raleigh, and then put them on an album together. Kind of like, I mean, the way I looked at it was like, kind of like, if you remember like old punk compilations, mm -hmm. yeah, where it's like, I've never heard of any of these bands, but I trust this label. So I'm going to now listen to all these bands and maybe I'll find one or two I like. Yeah. Or even it's if you awesome. don't trust the label, it's like, I need another CD in my Ford Focus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, so that was, that was, kind of, that we did a lot of that. So, um, it is. I mean, we were lucky to do a couple recordings, you know, during when everything seemed really um, bad. And now that, you know, they say that by May, every by late May, everybody's There's going to be boom, able to have for sure. Yeah, it's like, OK, well, well, no, you can just see it in booking like all this stuff oh, like, already like Yo, it's already booking. What do you got? Dude, booking what, do, what are you doing in September? Like, it's yeah. already like like I've advised a couple people like. Hey, you might want to get your date now because the way things are looking like because there is there was that article where it was like comics who were booked in theaters a year ago are going to end up in comedy clubs because someone else is going to take those theater dates. And so, you know what I mean? That pecking order just like slides down. You know what I mean? That's kind of what I wanted to ask you about as far as that part goes, is as we approach this time where people can get back out and do um, live performance, you know, to any scale to the level that they used to, is that going to really mess up either like rising or like mid tier uh, performers that like, are they going to have to get out of the way for all these people that have been log jammed for a year? I think yes and no. I think like with everything that, uh, you know, there's the mother of invention, which is like, OK, well, I was so, you know, it's uh, it, it, comedy is a great way to judge this because people get very lax in comedy and they go, OK, we'll just use St. Louis an example. And they go like, OK, well, I'm always I get to feature at St. Louis Helium four times a year, blah, 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 blah. Well, now everything got super weird. So some people are going to go like. Man, I don't get to do that anymore. Life's hard, and I'm just going to be mad. And then other people are going to be like, all right, well, then I'm just going to start my own thing over here, and I'm going to get increasingly better at this. 
And then when I do find a spot, people are going to be like, holy shit, like that person got really good. You know, it's so uh, necessity is the word I was looking for. That's mm -hmm. the mother of invention. I thought you were um, trying to make me guess and I couldn't remember. No, no, I, it was my own personal thing. Uh, it's been a long day. <laughs> but, I bet. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I think that uh, comics are resourceful, some, and some are cranky. And I think it. I, the weird thing about comedy, I really <laughs> believe, is it depends on how good the most recent thing you've written is. Like, when you're writing good shit, it's just like, I'll, I'll find a stage. I don't care. This stuff's hilarious. I, I'm really excited about it. And when you're kind of like, you get kind of crusty and you're like, I always do blur. Well, have you written anything? I have not, but I have earned <laughs> blur. It's right. like, all right, man, well, you're going to be the one who's cut out of this equation, you know? That's great. Do you think anybody uh, breaches the threshold for that? Do you think anybody has the right to be that shitty? To be old and crusty? In your group, yeah. I'm, I'm People will be crusty. No, I, I honestly don't. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I think there's people of a certain ilk where it's like, Hey, you're hugely famous. There are like lines to where it's like, yeah, you, it's okay that you didn't write anything. Cause you're on this national tour or whatever. And you're cycling through that tour schedule of material, just like a band would. Right. Right. But in terms of local, no, if you're, if you're quote unquote local, you should, my thing was always, if I'm local, I should be willing to take a risk and go like, I'm going to try a bunch of new stuff. Because if it doesn't work, the club already knows I'm funny, right? So, like, it's okay. Oh, that's a great I'm point. Not in, I'm not in jeopardy. Like, you could but take risks, not in a way that you're afraid of losing your regular spot, but more so that you could take risks because you know that you're also standing on all the performances you've done there before. And so that yeah, home I mean, field advantage is a privilege. Yeah, I mean, music's the same way. Like, I mean, just the Defeated County is a great example, especially with Langan. Like, Langan and Devin are really good friends with Kit at Off Broadway, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, the Defeated County can do weirder stuff at Off Broadway. Can they do it every single time? Probably not. But will they get a little more levity than someone playing it for the first time? Yes, right? And comedy's the same way. It's like, hey, we trust you, so you get a little bit of levity this time. Like, and so if you're still just hammering the same jokes over and over again, and then someone goes, yo, if you're not going to write anymore, like there's always someone trying to get into your spot. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, so it's, I don't think anyone earns like being old, crusty person. Yeah. So I have a, so many things I want to lead that into. I don't know how much time you have. But um, Joe uh, was asking. I have asking, nothing going on. Good, 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 good. Strap in, sister, because I haven't even opened the hummus. <laughs> Joe was wondering kind of some Are you going to throw favorite... the hummus over your shoulder, too? Everything goes over the shoulder. The hummus will have to be empty, though. Otherwise, the cats will get upset. I got a rug back here. Fair. My laptop and they do a is... nice zhuzh oil on top. So Joe was saying he was curious about some of your favorite environments to record comedy in. And I also want to dovetail that into... How is um, the standard comedy environment going to change as we merge back into it? I know, like, um, all of the, uh, like, A-listers that moved all over the country or whatever, they're doing stuff outside. I don't know if you like outside comedy. Um, talk to me about that. Um, about outside comedy? It's awful. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the worst. Um, it, like, I've done it a couple times. It's hard enough to get... Like, I've always said with comedy, it's like, you're essentially asking, until you're really famous, you're asking a bunch of strangers to just listen to you talk. That's what seems so crazy about this to me. Because Joe yeah. has always asked me why I never pursued stand-up, like, pre-COVID. And a lot of it is, like, when I'm playing guitar and I'm there with other people, it seems more like it's a group excuse. Like, especially when it's indoors. I'm yeah. not, like... But and even if it's even if you're playing music outdoors, it's loud enough that people can just walk by and ignore you, and it's okay. But like when you're doing and like, you can you're dance. delivering nuanced comedic material verbally, like you kind of need people to stop and pay attention for at least a second. No, it's outdoor comedy. Unless again, like you watch these things, it's like, well, it's Dave Chappelle outdoors. It's this person. It's like, well, fuck yeah. 
if I was walking down the street and I was like, and I mean, I'm not saying that's even what this is. Clearly, people bought tickets to this. Right. But if I'm walking down the street and I go, hey, is that Dave Chappelle standing on that roof telling jokes? I'm going to stop and I'm going to focus and I'm going to give him time to set up. You know what I mean? But like right. if it's just, say, a random comic named Jeremy Essick standing on a roof to, like i just say this because there's a there's this place it's a music venue right down the street from me called local 506 in chapel hill that has done stand up on their roof like during the pandemic and it's like i i'm not saying it's even a bad idea i'm just saying like if i'm walking down the street and someone's doing stand up i'm going to be like yo why is that crazy person yelling at me <laughs> right like i mean yeah. like, why is that music- guy on that roof talking about his dick there's no police yeah exactly <laughs> exactly exactly Sir! whereas like Sir, are you okay? <laughs> You're on the. Are you mad, sir? <laughs> um, I'm just sorry. Like, I'm I didn't like, even. I did. No, go ahead. No, I'm just like I'm picturing just like a, like you said, like a, like especially like an angry comedian that really likes to like uh-huh. yell down the front of the stage. Like that person, I'm picturing <laughs> them on the roof of Vintage Vinyl for some reason, because that's usually the only yeah. place where I walk for any period of time is in that intersection and I'm picturing like a, just like, like a fucking angry comic on top of the thing and screaming down at people. <laughs> yeah. It's just a bad idea where I think with a band, it's like you at least you're walking down the street and you're like, I don't know. Do I want to dance to this? You know what I mean? Right. It's like, it's, it's always, it's always been my argument with about public enemy, which is why they're the greatest group of all time. It's like you got into public enemy because it made you want to dance. And then you went, oh, there's all this really smart socio-political stuff going on. I was just shaking my ass. I didn't even realize what I was listening to. You know what I mean? And Joe, clip that, music- please. If you shaking clip that, your ass for that line coming. for me. I was just shaking my ass, and all of a sudden, it's a revolution. <laughs> but, I mean, honestly, that's, I mean, that's what music can do that stand-up can't. Right. Like, right. stand-up is you're just like, do I want to listen to this person yelling at me? Whereas like you just, if you're walking down the street and you hear bass, you're like, all right, does yeah. this, like, does this feel a certain way? Right. Yeah. And I'm sure also the response is like, you know, the, the comedian's going to be better in a room because he's going to hear all the laughter. And, you know, that's that whole dynamic, which so, there's so a talk lot to of me about that. So let's say that we're moving the ideal comedy venue back inside. Um, mm-hmm. Are we going to be able to do theaters? Cause uh, doing, theaters where you can only do couples every other row or whatever and then two seats between them or something that sounds like a nightmare it's going to be weird to see like a a theater like a fox theater at at a third capacity okay well then you tell me because this is actually a very i'm I'm actually interested in this Mm -hmm. what how long do you think we stay at these cap limits just your guess well that depends on vaccination i mean right I mean, if, I think there will be cap limits the rest of this calendar year. See, I don't agree. Good. When do you think they come off? Do you think Texas is really starting summer. the domino? No, I don't think Texas is starting the domino. I think it's summer. You think just I mean, summer I, will do it? I think if, I mean, you're already watching, and it, this isn't Texas. It's just a question of when do people actually get vaccinated. It's not a question of do we suddenly decide it's over? Because no one decides it's over. It, it's over when it doctors tell us it's over. Right, right? sure. Like, that's... Um, so if you... But you don't think there would be really, some kind of cap limit? Even if it's why? 80%? That's a good point. What's Okay, explain to me the difference between 80% and 100%. I'm not a doctor. I mean, I understand the difference between 25% and 100%. I understand, I understand the... I, understand, I also understand the math behind that. Thank you. <laughs> But if we've accepted certain norms, right? If we've accepted that you have to be at least six feet from people, right? Like we've accepted that as a general rule, perhaps even further, but six feet at a minimum. And if you're going to set a cap and go like, okay, well, the the only way we can do six feet from each other is a 35% cap, whatever. You can't just jump that up to 80 and go like, well, now we decide you can be within three feet of each other. Like that right. logically. Oh, because the, you're right, because the percentage is directly correlated to how many people and the square footage yeah. of the of the whole thing. So the distance would have to change. That's why the numbers are where they are. Not yep. so much. Okay, you're right. I wasn't connecting those things. 
But I only got a 23 on my ACT twice. I missed one question on my SAT. That's awesome. <laughs> that's, that's why that's, I brought it up. Killer, I remember man. that part. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a fun, that's a fun fact for my life. I remember <laughs> that knows. part. I, uh, I think my opinion about the comic, comedy clubs, though, is that I think the comedy clubs will prevail because, you know, the crowd that – because it's funny, like, let's say they take off all the all – the, you know, thresholds for people who can come in and, uh, you know, full capacity. And these people, they're going to go and they're going to fill it up. They're not going to like wait and be like, you know, because that's, that's people who go to comedy clubs aren't the type of people that are going to be prudes. You know, they're not going to be like, no, you know, we should wait. You know, we should just see, we should let everything open up first, you know. And I think that's what's great about comedy. Joe is saying that the people that go to comedy clubs are crazy. Yeah, they're so <laughs> shitty that they'll go. Well, no, he's but he's right though. That's the yeah. funny thing. So that's my that's my favorite story for all of this. So, um, intermittently, off and on during this period, I've myself done stand up because it was just like things were valuable, and I was right. trying to get my own recording in. And I knew that things were starting to change when I was in Philadelphia in January, and I got heckled by a drunk person in the crowd, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, that hasn't happened since." right before the pandemic like crazy like because people treated like coming out to a comedy show was like this is our entertainment and this is very special and we're going to treat we're not going to misbehave or whatever and then just the drunk guy screaming at me in philadelphia i was like and then it was the oh, old we're back. world was back yep we're back, <laughs> we're back. this feels this feel <laughs> especially philadelphia it was like this feels familiar all right awesome it's awesome prevails so yeah. how do you think this is going mean, to influence um, the traditional arc of what a comedian is and how a comedian kind of develops on their way to the point where they're kind of working regularly in the sense that, I mean, how are open mics going to come back anytime soon? Or, um, you know what I mean? This is kind of the conversation Joe and I have been having. I mean, I hope so. Um, you know, because that's, that's where it comes from, right? Like every interesting idea comes from an open, starts from an open mic. It starts from something pure. So, I mean, I hope, but I mean, it's like, um, I, I weirdly, a lot of people have quit. Like, I mean, that's the thing that, what? Y yeah, a lot of Whole people have career? quit. like on, in terms of a, on a local level. Wow. Um, so and it's so funny because everyone was bitching before the pandemic. They're like, too many people are doing comedy. Like, I'm not saying on the club <laughs> level. I'm saying the, on the comic to comic level. It's like, right. there's 4,000 people on open mic. Like, what? well, pandemic knocked that shit right out. Yeah. Um. So it's, you know, I I, I think it comes back. I, I to me, because, yeah, cap limits are just math. Right. Like if, if you just go, well, we did this cap limit because of this percentage and this distance, it's just a math equation. That's easy. Like you just go like, well, this is how math moves. And I mean, you could honestly go in and you go like, well, it turns out if you only have like uh, the first vaccine, you still need to be like 13 feet away from someone. I'm not saying that's a real thing. I'm just making that up. But I'm saying you could also do that math. Right. Like right. you could do, OK, well, this room has the square footage, so you do whatever. But the thing that when you ask like, well, how does this come back? How does this affect people? Who comes back? The real question is mental, right? right? It's like, I think we're all, like I talked to five friends in the last day and a half who all are ready to quit their jobs and they <laughs> all work in different industries. It's crazy. And that to me is very, it's like, yeah, it's a way that to... means something's going on. Like everybody's about ready to lose their shit. And it's yeah. because I, we're not, I, part of what I would argue is, we're not mentally prepared to re-enter the world. Like, we're like, I mean, Jake, it's a great example. Like, I was in St. Louis in November, and I borrowed uh, one year since. Mm -hmm. And, like, we kind of talked on the street, but it was kind of weird. And I had my friend here from North Carolina, so it was like, whatever. And what I wanted to do was give you and a I hug. Was just and ready. Say, I was know, ready to kiss that motherfucker. Oh, Andy? <laughs> well, he was handsome. He I was going to give him a smooch. That's why I was uncomfortable. Uh, the gear hawk on uh, Instagram. Anyways, um, but I'm saying like uh, you, we're not ready. Like if I was to come, so I'm going to be in St. Louis in April. Let's say I'm vaccinated by then. Let's say you're vaccinated by then. 
you're gonna get a hug like you'd never believe. I'm gonna right? kiss you because I miss so you. Good. You're yeah, buddy. Deep absolutely. And long. Absolutely. And I'm fine. Like I'm already like fine with that. Like going like, yeah, that's gonna how it's happened. If I'm vaccinated, Jake's vaccinated. This is how it's happening. I don't care. Yep. But I think for a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not ready to re-enter. Well, it's like, a level I've, of um, it's a level of uh, like awareness that we didn't used to have. We were sharing too many germs before, and we were just really used to them. And not you and me, <laughs> but like everybody on no. Earth. No, it's so. So again, and this is like more of an audio production conversation, but like when they when clubs started reopening and they were like, all the all the comics get their own microphone. And I was like, yeah, why weren't we doing this before? That's I've always super brought my own. Yeah. But again, what's a what's a fifty eight, a hundred dollars, seventy dollars if you find it used like it's so cheap. And I was like, oh, my God, I've been doing this for 20 years. And I own 58. Why and was I not bringing it's not, my own Especially microphone? with stand-up, what gets me is it's not just the the vehicle that your voice is traveling through to get to your audience. You're, it's a part of your performance, and you're holding it and caressing it and nurturing it and touching it and getting closer to it and getting farther away. Oh, yeah, some people eat it. Yeah. Some people lick it, like David Lee yeah. Roth, after they had seven opening bands. And it looks like it's got stuff in it yeah so good we sh- we, I, so i'm thinking that's a big part of it too people are um afraid of surfaces and air particles in a way that they never had to be before but that's also like already dissipated like i'm just saying oh, this yeah. is someone who's who's been doing recordings and like i've had to learn to go like okay we don't do two audience tracks and one mic track now it's two audience tracks and three mic tracks, one for each comic, right? Yeah. And now all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, those two guys decided to share a mic. And you're like, why the fuck would why they do they set that? Why set up the other that's mic? Just... Why are we sharing mics, guys? It's not set. But that's the thing. It's not It's not even setting up. The clubs always set it up. It's the comics are just like, yeah, we're just used to this. And it's like, do you know how gross that is? So gross. Even in a non-pandemic. It's, it's like gross. a toothbrush. It's like yeah. a toothbrush. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just imagining like CBGB, like – you know some like like later cvgb and some guys just like are we all using the same mic seriously oh like, yeah like it's so not punk rock to give a fuck about um sharing the mic it's like or it's almost kind of punk rock to be like this is kind of fucking gross <laughs> no it's not i'm sorry no it is you're right no i was just letting him we have to do that with joe to keep him grounded is we have to just let him sit with it for a minute it's like what you think you're a big man you want to you want to run a segment for 90 seconds bitch i'll ice you out so quick i'll act like i'm frozen i'll go like this (laughs) right there he is is he frozen see good luck with that oh he's super not so Jeremy, talk to me about um, some of the stuff that you that you have available musically. That also, because I know I find your comedy wherever I find stand up comedy. Otherwise, I listen to a lot of your stuff on Spotify. You have at least three full length albums there of stand up yep. comedy, but you also put out um, original music uh, throughout your career. And so, um, do you have anything you're still working on? I could see stuff uh, behind you. You got a sweet organ and that um, nice organ, bruh. Thanks, bruh. Yeah. Uh, so I just I didn't know what was up on that front. I know um, uh, we have mutual friends that you've been in bands with and whatnot, but I didn't know what you were still uh, into. Um, so let's not is still a thing. Great. Um, we're still. I'm still writing. I still play with uh, Andy, who you met, who uh, is taking over for Bob, who plays drums. And Michaela is still playing bass. Uh, so we're still a thing. Defeated County. We had our album come out in November. That's. Um, I just honestly, that's the most proud I've ever been of an album. Right. Like in terms of not just my work, but just everybody on it. Um, and then, you Very know, where'd you record that's... that? What's that? Where'd you record that one? The Defeated County album? Yeah. Uh, Listless Sound in St. Louis, Missouri. My oh, old studio. Oh, I didn't studio. know if you recorded that here or if that was after you left. <clears throat> it was recorded there and it was mixed in Raleigh. And oh, okay. a number of the guitar parts were recorded in Raleigh. <laughs> Um, cause I, you know, I did my overdubs, uh, here. Um, so yeah, that's, and then, you know, the shark dad stuff, uh, some of that, like, I, it's weird when you like, you know, Jason, obviously yeah. Jason Robinson and, 
I listened to that old Shark Dad stuff, and I was like, oh, those are pretty fun albums, man. So, like, those still exist in the ether? Oh, sure. Absolutely. I, well, and that's kind of, um, I, uh, like I mentioned, worked on one of your comedy albums, but then you did a split seven inch with Shark Dad, mm-hmm. where it was uh, a bit of your stand up on one side and then a song of Shark Dad's on the other, correct? Is that what I have? That is correct, yes. Yeah, and that, and then I think Matt Basler did the art for that, and that was really great. <laughs> Yeah, so Matt did the art for the for that album that's called Whatever that uh, you mixed. Um, and he's um, he's a good friend of the show behind the scenes. He hasn't been on yet, but he um, he is been talking to me about our seventy thousand dollar hoodie project that we're working on here at the show. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with the dogma of the show, but I thought I was going to make seventy thousand dollars off of a single batch of a hundred hoodies because I did the math wrong. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that um they would have to cost what... fourteen fifty a piece. Okay. Yeah, I don't that doesn't sound right, but okay. Yeah, yeah, well that's what happened. So I was doing the math about like how much money um it would cost to make the hoodies, and then I multiplied that by the number of hoodies I wanted to make, but like the price. So I just and mm-hmm. for some reason I just multiplied again. And so I thought I was gonna make more money than I've ever made ever on one batch of hoodies and so meanwhile i got my mom and my brother telling me they won't give me more than 30 bucks for for one and i'm like guys how are we going to hit 70k if we're at 30 dollars a piece that's going to take thousands of hoodies (laughs) so matt basler is behind the scenes working really hard with me on that on how to make the most expensive hoodies possible Mm -hmm. that i mean that that feels like a uh, that feels like a Matt situation. I would also uh, say that thousand dollar hoodie uh, feels like the greatest name for a, like late nineties band. Yeah, where's that done? Did you guys have hoodies back then? They were sweaters. yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, we did. You like how it's you guys? Like um, I wasn't even there. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, uh, you know, just uh, yeah. Matt's great. If we're if we're getting back to Matt, I think he's great. Oh, yeah. Um. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. I was just gonna say, we just gonna, he, what else are we gonna do? What else? He knows how he do? knows how I feel about him. He knows how he knows he knows. And um, so that defeated County record is that on um Spotify and whatnot with it is everything yep. else. And that's just the defeated County. It's not um, the def- didn't you speed Lang in the defeated County back in the day? Um, not that I know of. Uh, if it was, it wasn't when I was in the band. But yeah, it's just the defeated county in the album's called an early fall. Mm-hmm. I have that on my. That's on my Spotify. I see that in my rotation. So that came out last November. Yes, that feels like a hundred years ago. It does actually. What the fuck? Like GameStop was just le- a month ago. Like what happened? <laughs> what is going on in the world? It's. I mean, again, I think that's where we we're all at this point where everybody's just ready to fucking murder each other. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's just it's time. It's so hard. Like time just doesn't even make any sense anymore. Yeah, I don't like it. True. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've I've actually I've been loving people more. Jesus fucking Christ! You know. God damn it! I uh, I just really I don't know connection. You know. What? Yeah, Thanks for little, that, Joe. Kind of a grand, uh, you know, against the grain. Here, go ahead. I'm gonna pee. You go ahead. And you tell Jeremy <laughs> about your connection. Here, let me let me increase the size of your window. Go ahead, Jeremy. One big thing that I really want to cover here is who do you think has the right to the Holy Land? You do not. You do not put him through this. <laughs> um, I know there's been a lot of I've I've been hearing kind of a big th- you know, a lot of debate around this topic. Well, sure. And I mean, most of my stand up is based around this topic. So I appreciate you doing the really? research. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I, well, I mean, growing up Jewish, I mean, there's that. But then I was married to a Palestinian woman. So there's that. So it's a very it kind of depends on which day you ask me about this, to be honest with you, and how I feel about my now ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> and and conversely, because I am adopted, how I feel about my adopted family. You know right. what I mean? It's like some days I feel like, well, my ex wife is a good person and better. So she, it's 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 the Palestinians who have the right to the Holy Land. But then sometimes <laughs> I'm like, you know what? She was kind of not great, 
and my parents have been nice to me today and they're Jewish. <laughs> so right. I like I, I'm, I'm, you know, six and sevens on this. <laughs> you should have like put it in like the prenup. Like, you know, if we get a divorce, I will say that you your people had a right. <laughs> to the whole well, thing. I'm not saying she didn't ask. Um, <laughs> I mean, there are reasons there are reasons you get divorced, Joe. Um, I, yeah, I recall. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. That is funny. that's OK. So we handled that. Uh, yeah. Other tough questions as Jacob comes back. From Jake, the you missed it, man. Jesus Christ. Do I still Zionist. have a shower? Did you guys continue to talk about the Holy Land? <laughs> uh, I think I gave a very honest answer. And uh, you'll have to you'll have to catch it in post. I know. It's I was gonna, just gonna say I'm gonna catch it in post. Don't even bother. I got it. It's gonna upset a lot of Columbia students. If it's on, if it's on, if it's on, wax, it's good to go, baby. <laughs> so, thank you for that. Um, oh my God, I'm so full, <laughs> dude. I've never seen you eat for that long. Oh my God, that's the thing. It wasn't necessarily even the quantity, and though it was a lot of food, it was more so the. Um, just the duration for how long I was eating. Yeah. Wait, so what was your favorite room? What, what do you think is the best quality room to record in? And also, which is your favorite room just to perform in? Yeah, so those are, uh, I'm hearing two different questions. One is about the recording, and then one is about the actual just experience of performing there. Um. So, well, so I'll give you three, honestly, because there's, <laughs> I love that you throw that over your shoulder. Um. <laughs> So I kind of feel in general that um, Philly, because of its small ceilings, is a really good room to record in because the yeah. sound is like very tightened without having to, you know, kind of fix the reverb yourself. Um, so that would, to me, be like auditorily my favorite to perform in um, here in raw, like, well, I'll get to that third. An indie, which uh, Jared Freed has a special that's actually coming out tonight. I did the audio for it. I actually do the intro as well. Mm. Um, that's a little plug. But um, Nameless plug. Where is that available? Uh, it's available at Jared Freed's YouTube channel. Jared um, Freed. Is that F-R-I-E-D? It is. Um, so uh, Spelling is big he, on this he, show. We spell everything what's that? here. Spelling is big here. Oh, I thought you meant Aaron Spelling. Uh, oh, the father we also Tory love spelling. the whole spelling family. Of course. Randy, Tori's <laughs> brother. He was on Now 2 and 0. <laughs> wow. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Thank you. Um, anyways, so the club in Indy feels like a small theater. You know what I mean? Because they've got like a whole uh, first level and then there's a balcony. Um, and so like and, if you watch Jared's... I'm sorry, go ahead. And And the ceilings are low? No, the ceilings are high. Oh, so it's different. But it's clubs. it's it feels like a theater. You know what I mean? So like yeah. Philly, if you want to do like a tight, like compact, whatever, um, that's why I like Philly. Indie is it feels like a theater. And then we just started filming here in Raleigh last week. And Raleigh's a super old club, but the stage is real high. Oh yeah. So it on video looks like a theater because right. the stage is like super high. So it depends kind of like because we run I, like we run into this as a record label with managers. It's like, well, are you just looking for a really tight shot? Do you want to do like a bigger thing that looks like a theater, or do you want to do like something that looks like more epic with like a high stage? So, right. I'd bet that the that the theater thing is gonna catch more eyes just because people, you know, Netflix is kind of like are like the millennial like open mic room because you know your generation like you you'd go out and see something Easy. and you wouldn't even. You wouldn't even know what you're going to see where millennials are like, we don't even know who's going to be there. And so like Netflix has kind of become like this, like, and it's not even like HBO because HBO is something that you kind of had to have premium access to where uh, everybody has Netflix. Sorry. All right, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. I'm no, out. you're great. You're great. No, it's, it's, uh, he called me old and not that um, old. I'm just saying, no, this is getting really good. This is getting really good. I can't wait to, <laughs> I can't wait. We're going to clip. We're going to clip up the whole feud. Can we can we do like this pose like yeah like this? yeah we'll make sure no. we get plenty of that like at sure, the end ready? of an episode of Hot Ones where they pose like <laughs> um so how much of that affects the performance aspect do you think when like not just the crowd sizes or crowd capacity but the actual ergonomic space of the room how does that kind of change your interaction with the audience when you're when you're either witnessing or, or performing stand up 
Um, I think all of it. It affects it so differently than music. You know what I mean? Because like, I feel like with music, which is what I did first, you know, sure. is you go up, A, it's you and a couple other people. So you're kind of up there as a unified team. B, it's like once you start playing, it doesn't matter what the crowd's doing. You're, you know, the stage volume so loud. Like, it doesn't matter, right? But like stand-up, it's like, you get in your head about how many people are there. You get in your head about, are they laughing? You get in your head about like, why the fuck am I in Fort Wayne, Indiana? Like, you know, like, right. <laughs> those things can right. come around. Like you can go like, Oh, it turns out Muskegon, Michigan is actually a really cool crowd, yeah, but see, I, I didn't expect like it that. to be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's it's great. I, Has there ever been a room that you didn't think, that like is an alternative club so it's not like a comedy club but it's something you've performed comedy and that you think that you thought like wow this should really become a comedy club because this really worked like a like a like, like a, a bodega bathroom. or yeah a bodega or a truck stop <laughs> well i mean i i've never performed a truck stop Birth but that department. sounds really fun that'd be i cool. want to yeah. do the showers i want to perform at the showers that's what i that's loves. where my mind was yeah okay okay well at that point define perform <laughs> oh, you know what I'm doing. I do actually. Um, he so nailed it. Were... <laughs> so, um, yeah, a lot I of crowd know. work. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm doing the showers at Love's. Oh, nice. That was good. Where you brought that in at the end. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like. There have been a couple, like, just when I was starting out, like, you would do, um, I think if I'm remembering it correctly, and it was so long ago, but, like, Muskegon, Michigan is a good example of, like, you just were, like, in a bar situation, and it was like, oh, that turned out to be really fun. I had no idea. But 90% of the time, you walk in, you're like, this is going to suck. And you're like, yep, it sucked. Yeah, right. Like, you're usually yeah. right about that. Yeah. Yeah. So is that a problem with comedy intrinsically? Is It seems to be an art form where you're constantly tr um, trying to achieve this thing that is really great in spite of so many things. I mean, it's, right. it's a big part of it that it's kind of already set up to be like, there's so many obstacles. Like is, is comedy entertaining because it's so hard to pull off successfully because of all the, the barriers. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've always argued that the hardest thing about comedy is unless you know the person it's just a stranger talking to you. And right. how long are you really going to pay attention to a stranger before your girlfriend's like, blah, 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 blah. Or you're like, oh, do I need another beer or whatever? And now, I mean, it's, again, as uh, Joe alluded to, being as old as I am, um, I mean, when I started, people had cell phones, but there wasn't texting. You know what I mean? So it's like... Wow. You were playing, you yeah. were playing jacks at the soda Jesus fountain. Christ. Well, what I would do is I would walk on stage with a, a wheel and then I'd have a stick, right? And I'd be like rolling the wheel with a stick. Oh and that's how I'd keep them focused as I, yeah. as and I then, pull my yarns. And then, the, and then the closer was fire. Yep. Yep. I'd, uh, <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd actually, I'd set a witch on fire. Um, yep. He'd burn wow. a witch in the cave. There's a different time. Uh, but no, it was so even that like his it, garnering people's attention has been the weirdest thing about stand up anymore. You know what I mean? It's like you, no one ever really came. I shouldn't say no one, but like frequently people in the crowd at stand up shows were like, I don't know who this person is. I just want to go on a date at seven o'clock. This will do, uh, you know, um, yeah, yeah. that so feels like a hand job in the parking lot of the Galleria. We just left the pasta house. This place is open. Let's get an apple teeny while the lewds kick in. You told me you wouldn't tell anybody <laughs> did you just, about that. Did you just write the most St. Louis postcard ever? That's exactly <laughs> what that sounds like. That's exactly what I'm <laughs> thinking of actually, the person right. who, because we were just making fun of who was probably going to be our next mayor, has been ejected from the Galleria for throwing a fit. But so we were just talking about her at the top of the show. And then I was just thinking helium here in St. Louis is... A, like in the mall, and so if you go to the pasta mm. house for dinner on a di on a Tinder date when the world is open, and then you just want to have an apple teeny and continue to talk while you kind of work on your chicken parmesan before you go get a tug job in the parking garage, 
you go watch a little local stand up. <laughs> but by the way, Tug Job was my favorite '80s wrestler. Um, That's a great wrestler <laughs> name, Tug Job, the Invincible. Well, I, it's Tug Job McCoy. It feels like a rite of passage, actually. I know Nikki Glazer was always joking about. Yeah, I used to steal from here all the time, and I'm like, first of all, probably not true. But then also. I feel like that would be a defense for this current mayor situation. She'd be like, well, who hasn't been kicked out of the gallery? Yeah, it, I, that's the thing, too. Is so like, wait, I, are, don't, are, I don't live there anymore. Is this uh, which mayor? No, Lida Cruson is retiring. Yes. And so she's going to die like the lion from from uh, the Golden Compass. And uh, she's going to vaporize like Luke Skywalker. And... Okay. Uh, and so we just voted in the primary yesterday. It's going to be either Tashara Jones or Kara Spencer. They're they're going against the Republican, but that's not really a right threat here. So, um, you know, uh, we were talking. They're both kind of uh, progressives. Kara Spencer dated at separate times two different guests of the show, and then a mutual friend of ours who shall remain nameless for his own anonymity told me on good authority that old girl got kicked out of the Apple store at the Galleria for throwing a fit because her warranty was expired and she felt like she was being pressured into upgrading. Ooh, I know who that friend is. Yeah, and she got <laughs> fully ejected from the situation. There was even talks of like a ban from that location. That's hilarious. Well, I'm not local anymore, but I will say when I worked in the state capitol, uh, Tashara Jones was one of the nicest people I encountered on a daily Thank basis. Thank God, I needed so that. So take that for what you will. But well, I, was I saw a young... her at a Mexican restaurant once, and I wanted to go give her my I voted sticker because I had just voted for her, and then um, she had just lost. But then I didn't because she was drinking with her staff, and I wanted to leave her alone. She, when I worked in Jeff City, she could not have been nicer. And okay. I, like, no one owed me anything, and she was so, so nice. Just so. nice anyway. See, that's real, that's true niceness. Yeah. Yeah. Unless so. she thought maybe that you were of authority, and she just didn't know. She didn't know. But I've I, never I, assumed I could, that about you. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that guy with 14 jelly bracelets. Yeah. Yeah, the guy with <laughs> the Madonna bracelets? Going. Yeah, be nice to him. He could be in charge. He's probably a lobbyist for Pfizer. Uh-huh. I love that. Jeremy, so uh, you you have so many things I could promote. Um, I'm going to um, give you some of your time back this evening uh, after my, my guests try to start a fight with you. Uh, weird. I know. Isn't that crazy? What is – I don't understand. But so listen, so you engineered Sorry. and um, are produced the uh, Jim Freed special that's out on YouTube tonight. Jared. Jared, Jared Freed. Freed. Yes. Good. See, this is why yes. I wanted to review these things with you. <laughs> Jared Freed, that's out tonight on YouTube. Uh, the Defeated County has uh, music available featuring our friend Jeremy Essig on uh, your streaming platforms. Yup. Um, Helium Records is is the record label. HeliumComedyRecords.com. HeliumComedyRecords.com. We'll put that in the description. Joe, will you write that down so I don't forget? <laughs> Thanks, Joe. He's writing it down. See, look at him go. And... Uh, also, let's not, L-E-T apostrophe S space N-O-T, correct, is the correct spelling? Yes. Also, also original music with Jeremy Essig available um, stuff. on all of that stuff. Apple Music, you're probably on Deezer. Who's your um, distributor? Are you, are you a distro kid Sony. guy? Sony, you just go straight, you pipe it straight to Mickey Mouse, huh? We, <laughs> so, I feel like, well, I'll just be completely honest, because of the comedy record later, we have record label we have sony as our distributor so i get my own boutique label where i can release music <laughs> yeah you can sony. sneak some stuff in there uh-huh that's funny i would be like if um yeah. oh that would be hilarious Did like Helium if someone's just... like like four tracks of the way through like a comedy record and then all of a sudden it's like a bunch of like rock music they weren't expecting it's like what is it's this just, it's like i've hijacked it's just me. this release it's just me <laughs> screaming over a distorted guitar it's yoko it's a yoko ono <laughs> tribute record um uh, that's exactly oh, what no, no i want to tell you like the, the, just on level with that because i think i think you'd think this is funny jake and then i know i know you're trying to close it up um so i also contribute to a podcast called uh um rock the cash bar out of uh -huh. houston and they wanted me to uh do a cover of miserloo by dick dale yeah so this is just when we're talking about music i think you'd love this so I did it, but I did it in my guitar tone, which if you listen to any of those Let's Nots albums are is very fuzzy. Yeah. Because I'm 
from the 90s, as Joe brought up. I'm very old. Yeah. And um, we were there when they invented fuzz. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, and I got an email back that said, no, it sounds right, but it sounds like really distorty. Did you re record it wrong? <laughs> that was like, <laughs> oh, uh, my gosh. No, I did that intentionally, but I can. No, that's all stylistic choice, but to. thank you. <laughs> it's like yeah i really That's, love I the whole just... thing except for your favorite part i really love everything about it except for the part of it that expresses your taste and personality that's the part that we want to change except the thing that sounds like you if we yeah. can get except you the out part of it that's like just... is mixed up in your identity and you've been on a journey with this your whole life take that part out the rest of it's solid the only reason we asked you to do it instead of just using the miserly track <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. We wanted you to put your own spin on it, but could it sound just like the just original? Same. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, also, but, I mean, that podcast is actually very fun. Uh, so, Rock the rock the Cash Bar, uh, HeliumComedyRecords.com, and uh, Jared Freed has a special. And, yeah, I think that should cover it. That's great. I, I love, um, and I want to have you back on to do some stuff. We are going to start doing... Um, Live performances down here. The defeated county is going to be amongst our uh, inaugural cast of uh, uh, characters that we're going to have down here. So next time you're coming through, we'll have to schedule something in advance. I will uh, be in town in April, so let's do that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Let's put that on the books, and I'll make sure to give Joe a Xanax beforehand. Jesus, you know we're uh, you know we actually we NPR owed us a favor, so NPR is going to go ahead and produce our first basement show yeah, at our studio. True. But I mean, they. I mean, we were kind of thinking about not doing. It. They don't really have the reach that we want. But yeah, we we're we'll we're wondering if we want to settle. stoop to that level. We're wondering yeah, if sure. that's like the right platform for us. Well, I mean, sometimes you do favors for others, you know. Yeah, like an yeah. entire network of you know, um, like the truck stop, or the truck stop, the men yeah. at the loves. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm doing my crowd work at the loves showers. <laughs> Men at the Loves was my favorite Pet Shop Boys album, and I'm glad you referenced it. <laughs> hey, let me ask you, because we opened the show with this. Uh -huh. um, when you hear the lyric, sucking on a chili dog outside the Tasty Freeze, how does that make uh -huh. you feel? Well, I don't like John Mellencamp anyway, so it fills me with ire. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, I I mean, I, I understand the uh, what exists for for it like in the ether for that phrasing but he's just terrible anyways like so I think what do you what, what so what is in that because i'm so <laughs> anti that song and Fake? that lyric <laughs> falseness i mean it's it Mellencamp to me has is very much of the ilk of um and this will probably piss people off more than what i'm about to say about Mellencamp is it's when springsteen was like yeah man i've never worked in a factory like this is all just me and Springsteen does it better. Springsteen's very much a better, you know, teller of these stories. Mellencamp's just like, I was the prettiest guy in Indiana. <laughs> right. Um, and I <laughs> yeah. could kind of sing. So yeah. suddenly I'm telling these rural Midwestern, like, yo, right. I grew up in Ohio. I lived in St. Louis most of my life. Like, I know yeah. what the Midwest looks like. That would have been a male shit. model if he wasn't three feet tall. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. He's literally... Yeah. So I'm. A voodoo doll of Sally Fields. The, the phrasing of that is not great, and I can see where it's easy to make a joke about. But it's like, like when something's terrible, it's like who gives a shit? You know what I mean? It's <laughs> right. like if you drive a Yugo, who's like, well, I don't like how the cup holders look. It's like it's a fucking Yugo. Who gives a shit? <laughs> right. Which part of this are we talking about now? Yeah, what? A... You're talking about the chili dog. <laughs> I'm just talking about him being terrible in general and you go right. being terrible. Yeah. Oh, oh, because I was thinking sucking on a chili dog. We're just talking about we have this problem where there's like at least two groups of people. And, and we can draw that binary from how you feel about the lyric of that song. Do you really enjoy that song or do you feel like, ugh, like we do? And there's a lot of people that like that. And I'm trying to figure out why. Because it's anachronistic. Uh-huh. See, it 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 references a part of your past that doesn't exist. It's totally like acting good. like, oh, man, me and my dad used to always get cheeseburgers. But it's like you got a cheeseburger one time. If you <laughs> always got cheeseburgers, you guys would both be dead because you ate nothing yeah. but cheeseburgers. Right. Well, that I mean, that is Indiana. But I mean, I think you <laughs> can do it. 
you can do it generationally. Uh, so, like, the dude from Eve 6 has become really big on Twitter, right? Oh, man, that's great. When washed-up frontmen become big on Twitter, it's usually a lot of coded racial language. That's right. Three is grays. Are th- trapped. Daughtry. Daughtry. Okay. <laughs> so what happened to the guy from Eve 6? I think he's English. No, he's from California. Son of a, who are we talking about? Are we talking Heart in a Blender guy? Yes. Okay, so what did he do on Twitter? Well, he just got really big because he he largely just started making fun of people. It was actually pretty funny. Like, wow. But uh, what I'm saying is he, it made me go back and listen to them, and I was never a fan of theirs. But oh, yeah. then you listen to Here's the Night, and you go, yeah, yeah, that feels an, like, especially if you watch the video, to me, it was like, oh, yeah, that feels like something I was a part of, but I was not. I was like four years past that. And if you watch it, they're like, I'll go into this party. And it was like, we never had parties like that. Like, yeah. that had nothing to do <laughs> yeah. with my youth. And I think to some people, it's like that, like, bullshit song, Jack and Diane. It's like, they're like, oh, yeah, that's how I grew up. And it's like, no, nah, it's really not. But now you've set it in your head that that's what it is. Yeah. Right. It's like, it's like, um, people always say like, people act like they eat apple pie every day because apple pie like represents like things, right? Um, American things, I guess. And then, so they, but they act like that, you know, I like like good old fashioned, like apple pie brother. And it's like, what? Like, what do you, you mean just like they're referring to actually a whole lifestyle and an ideal, Mm -hmm. but not so much. So they're thinking like sucking on a chili dog outside the tasty freeze. You're saying is like this uh, false nostalgia that they kind of create for themselves. Uh, by the way, I always thought the line was sucking on Chili's dog, and Chili was the name of his friend. So, Even better. Oh, Even on better. Chili's I always dog. Interp- I mean, that's yeah, good. I like. That, to, I mean, that's how I always sucking took it. on <laughs> Chili's dog. I like to imagine. Dog. I like to imagine that this was actually a product of like similar to the Godfather where they made up these fake rules for the gangs and then the gangs started picking it up. So it's like they start making up these fake like rules for uh, you know, Midwestern culture and everybody now is like becoming gay and sucking on each other's dogs, you know? Like that's America. Oh, like if we just you know? convince enough people that the lyric <laughs> like, is that's sucking America. on Chili's dog, then they'll just assume right. that the lyric is sucking on Chili's dog and then the children are all gonna grow up to suck on dogs. <laughs> can can this episode please be called Sucking on Chili's Dog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I was already going to name it Sucking on <laughs> yeah. a Chili Dog, but now we got to change it to that. And I think that'll help the copyright implications. Question anyway. mark. It's got to be. If we change mark. it just, it'll be like how Vanilla Ice did the bass line where he added. No, the... I went. Yeah. Oh, so the exact same thing? Okay. Sweet. Same. So you added a hi hat, is what you're saying, but that's good. No, that's good. You're right. You're right, Ice. Rob, Mr. Ice. I gotta turn on that song now. We need to close with that song. But what? Who said we're closing? I have plenty of material. Not, I was sorry, just gonna I'm, let Jeremy yeah. get back to work because we're because because you keep cussing at him. I miss you slandering at slandering my club, poor Jeremy. guest. Jeremy, you were one of the best local acts. You, I mean, you were really good. Yeah, he you can't know, hang I, with I don't the know touring you know guys. That. He's a real piece of shit on a national scale. But when you <laughs> lived here and you only worked here, Jeremy, you were the shit, brother. You're pretty dope. I, it's. I don't even know where to start. It's so weird. Um, like, I, I feel like I like, I was joining a f- friend of mine, and then this all became very combative, and uh, it's just it's been a weird hour, y'all. Um, <laughs> it's been so good. It's been so good. I'm so happy yeah. to see you. You're such a blessing. No, it's great to see you, man. You're the um, voice of your you're... generation. <laughs> It was As also Joe good to said, see you, Jeremy. If it was 1876, you'd be like Kylie Minogue right now. Um, I'm not sure your timeline's correct, but thank you. <laughs> uh, I told you, I didn't even... I, I really bombed the ACT. Twice. Uh, yeah, th- this was uh, this was fun. Um, thanks, everybody. Um, Bye. I don't fucking know. It's HeliumComedyRecords.com. Jeremy Essig on all your favorite platforms. Jeremy, thank you so much. I love you, buddy. I'll <laughs> see you real soon. Let's talk about April. All right. Bye, y'all. Okay, see ya. Bye. Great.
good fun, good times, great oldies. Jesus, Joe. I know. I'm sorry. I what was, are you I, doing? Sometimes, it, like the delivery is just bad. That is a good, dear friend of mine. Yeah, he was really sweet. I really misjudged. You him. immediately come in with, "Hey, do you do you remember me?" Yeah, I was. I guess he I was hadn't like, even logged excited. in yet. I didn't yeah, even was, know for sure that he was on the call yet. Yeah, it was really dumb. I'm sorry. I love it. No, it's, I it's, love it. Oh it my was God. horrible. It set the gold. tune you for the whole. You can't create this kind of moment. Yeah, I really thought it was like the spotlight there. It was bad. <laughs> no, no, no. It was great. You were excited. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was excited. But you were excited just... to see him, and you hadn't seen him in even longer than I had. And I was excited to see him. He's a good friend of mine, and you're right. He uh, is a very um, humble talent to work with, and uh, and I'm glad you recognized him and remembered him from the helium days. I just thought that moment was so funny. It's peak Joe. It's my favorite Joe thing. <laughs> I was serious. We got tons of other shit to talk about here. So strap in, bitch. Jeremy Essig, good friend of ours. Always a pleasure. I, I don't like feel I'm... like we can move on to any of this. Yeah, this is, you know, this is about to get really deep. This is a lot of stuff. Let's hit some, let's hit some uh, headlines and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and we'll save some of this shit for next week. You know, like I was talking to big game, like, no, we're fucking doing it. <laughs> like it's, we're an hour and a half in my goodness. I can't believe I've put off Wendell for another week, but he's probably dead. He was yeah, a crazy we, person. We really got to get to that. So we're not going to get to that today. Um, we're not going to talk about all this metaphorical stuff. We're not going to talk about any of this latest news. What's the last thing I had you put in here? Parkway North High School to close for nearly a month due to COVID-19. That's partly their spring break. But this was the um, school we were talking about that the health department stepped in. Did I tell you this? We actually, I think we ended at that. And then he. And we he ended at that. Like, and then yeah. Jeremy showed up. So you're saying you put this at the wrong place. In the, yeah, uh, I did. I rushed In it. the show prep. So this is your yeah, fault? It is. My God. I know. Don't you send know, this one to Lion's Choice. You know, what I want I think that is... money. I want that money in the bag, Joe. When I say put the beef in the bag, that means you put the beef. If you get really famous and you make like a lot of Lions Choice money, are you going to keep? Can I get? Can I stay as the producer? Like I don't I... even know if I don't even know if I want you to call yourself that anymore. I know I told you earlier. Yeah. I know I said, yeah. Joe, you have to tell people you're the producer. We have to be equal partners in this. You have to advocate yeah. for yourself. And then it goes right to your head, and you come in, and you shit all over my guest. I know. Yeah, I know. You bomb. It's be it's brilliant. It's like a level of – it's like how I felt about – you remember in Portlandia, the two librarian ladies, the ladies yes, that own yeah. the bookstore? Yeah, um, I have a poster of them. That, really? Mm -hmm. You would. That, no, I'm just kidding. That's the kind of sense of humor that that whole last hour with him was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like, it's so much of it was funny and entertaining, and we got the message across, but also it all had this level of like, like you can't look away, but it's like an American Idol. <laughs> it's like watching a car <laughs> crash into someone's anus. Yeah. <laughs> I had to shake that crazy off me, Joe. My God. I didn't get to ask him, but I was going to ask him how. Oh, you had questions? Yeah, I saw a question about I, how. I got... love when I let you get. Oh, I can't wait to find out what you guys talked about when I was peeing. I bet you that was. Did you tell him something about getting divorced? No. Well, so he got into his divorce and like he was talking about his father and like. What? Yeah, I mean, yeah, his father like dropped him at a bus stop or something when he was younger, and then he got married, and uh, Israel has the right to the Holy Land. Like on paper, good... that all sounds fine, but that's one of those like look at who you're in the room with things. And it's right, not that I'm yeah. anti Israel. It's just that people that are really aggressively pro Israel, I don't know that I want to be affiliated with them. So it's a hard that's a hard road. That's why that's the joke. Right. On the show. I love how I'm just turning into Don King. I look like oh my God. Um, <laughs> that's the joke on the show, is that when we don't know what to talk about, let's wrap it up with like the most complicated and controversial topic short it of probably is it Ms. probably Morrison. is the most complicated topic it's ever. so complicated it's definitely more yeah. complicated than abortion that's right but i don't think it's more controversial locally at least male rights so let's write all this down jeremy essig dear friend of mine super multi-talented dude 
Um, he's also older than shit, and um, on and really, he was only top notch on a local scale. Is that how? Is that your summation? You rat bastard. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm, you he also had slanderous thief in the night. He also had like one of the most complex, you know, uh, vocabularies I've ever heard. It was like a different language. Listening. He is a highly intelligent individual. And that's part of yeah. what I started to kind of uncover there as we were talking to him is that I've known that about him. I've always known that um, he scored obscenely high on his SATs and because it's something he used to ha talk about in his act. Yeah. And so I've always looked for evidence of that and things that he did. Because when you know yeah. something about somebody, you, you look for it. Right, yeah, like Alfred word. is another one of these guys. Like Al Ludwig is a really, really smart dude who knows a lot of things in some detail. Jeremy's equally as um, uh, uh, surprising in the level of detail he can get into about certain things. He's very intuitive. We should have gotten into very close with attention. Him. He's never, to my knowledge, had like the the crazy drinking benders like I used to have. So he remembers a lot more of his life than I do, and. Uh, he dresses that part though. He's a yeah. He's a strapping lad, and uh, yeah, highly, highly intelligent. Yeah, I've um, got the word here: anachronistic. I've got ilk. I didn't yeah, he'll say a this. word. He's got. Look, I love words. I have the best words. That yeah. Um, Is that a yeah? So I love him. Tomorrow night we are shooting some very special content for Jacob V Weekly. Um, and part of an extended celebration of our uh, 20th episode. And we are just really excited. Every week, I feel like we're growing exponentially in our capacity for the things we want to do. Uh, we are still talking um, merch. We are still talking um, content on other platforms. We are still talking uh, guests, musical guests. We have the set all ready to go down here. My pedal board just got here from Texas, and it works, and it's pretty. I also wanted to tell him about a contest that we have coming up. Um, so, we? yeah. So if you can confirm and and if you can send to the podcast page that you have gathered at On least. Instagram? Yeah, at least 20 followers for us, you will get five free sweater hoodies from the first batch. And they're going to be exclusive to you. Special color, this special design. This is a design. lot of math. Are you making this up? No, this is real. We talked about this. So, listen, guys. Hoodies for followers, okay? Yeah. Bring me the metadata, and I'll give you a fucking hoodie. Yeah, I need to sell them at $1,449.95 a piece to get to my $70,000 goal. So you're getting like ten grand worth of hoodies there for free. You will get five of those hoodies, and if you go to the Etsy page, you'll I will see buy you a that Nissan they're $1,000. If you get one person to sub for a month on Twitch, or if you can get somebody to send a medium pizza to my house, I'm going to buy you a Nissan Leaf. You can email us at jacobbweekly at gmail.com, or you can uh, hit us up direct message in the Instagram. If you go through the Jimmy John's drive through and you get me a large pickle and a bag of thinny chips, I'm going to get you a buy one, <laughs> get one Kia Soul. I'm going to get you one in green and one in blue. Jake, you, you cannot say that we cannot afford that. I feel like that's what you're doing. You know how much money I need to make on these hoodies to hit 70 grand, and you're going to give five no. of them away? Yeah, for but likes? the five that we give away will be five of 10, and the, the rest, the other five, will be listed on the Etsy page for $1,000. Is it likes or is it followers? We need followers. On what platform? We need the Instagram. We want Instagram followers, and you'll get five exclusive hoodies any size you like. And a birthday shout out, but we need to discuss that. But oh. it's up to you. It'll be a coupon. I, I, now I really feel like you're making shit up as we go. No, I no. We talked about this before the podcast. I agreed to all of this. Yeah, it was part of the. Uh, well, it was part of our tax break system. We, we God, I, I, dude, I'm gonna get so fucked on my taxes, bro. Yeah, we really gotta. If nobody's watching, we can just cover that now. No, 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 no. We got people. We got people on on the docket. Let me wrap this up for the week. What do you say here? Uh, God bless America. Woo!
guys, that's another episode of Jacob V Weekly. Follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Google, whatever. We have a new Instagram page for the show, at Jacob V Weekly. That's J-A-C-O-B-V-I-W-E-E-K-L-Y. We post exclusive content, clips, highlights. Jacob V Weekly on Instagram. You can also find original music by Jacob V on all of your music platforms. Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, Deezer, etc. You can follow me on Twitter at Malachi Envy or just search for Jacob V STL. I curate a monthly Spotify playlist since May of last year. March is up, brothers, and it's a doozy. A lot of good femme vibes. Jacob V's favorite songs on Spotify. We did it. Be safe. High five.